You seem like you're recovering well from the snake bite. Indeed. It's thanks to everyone's quick thinking. Of course. Ludmila's help getting rid of the assassins is rather confusing, though. As for Tigra, seeing him spring into action like that and suck out the poison to save you was inspirational. Yeah, I guess. I feel bad that instead of immediately helping, I just stood there stunned like a statue. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, my lady. Well, since he saved your life, I've decided to give Tigra a reward. Mm -hmm. Please cover yourself, for modesty's sake. Do you feel the need to be modest when a dog or a cat sees you naked? <clears throat> and judging by your rather flaccid demeanor, I'm assuming you're not here to ravage me either. It was an accident. It's my fault for not thinking that someone else might already be using this bath. Are you sure there's nothing else you want to say? Um... I'm sorry and I won't do it again. Your bath. Now don't tell me you set that up. Huh? Set what up? <sighs> What's wrong? Does Lady Ludmila of the Proud House of Glory not believe in eating wheat gruel from street vendors? Of course I don't. I have no appetite for it. And the whole scene is beneath a war maiden's dignity. Oh. oh, really? Oh, this looks tasty. <laughs> She's <laughs> such a child. Me. I'm not exaggerating. Oh, oh, you're really missing out, Mila. <laughs> oh, Lord. Would you like a serving, Lady Ludmila? <laughs> I'm trying to apologize again for earlier. With that? Well, I'll accept the gesture at least. I'm pretty sure he was to blame for the mix-up anyway, so... You know, it's not terrible. See, I thought you'd like it. <laughs> Tigra, what are you doing? I could ask the same thing of you! I don't like you giving that shriveled blueberry of a war maiden any special attention! Shut up, I kiss her! Just kiss her, special girl! Attention. <laughs> Count Tigra Vermidvorn. Huh? You're a good-hearted man. It's too bad that's all you are. Like a dog forever at Eleonora's command. I've lost interest in you. That's your big assessment of him. That's a laugh. Let me translate what you're really saying. I'm a teeny little war maiden who can't see all the things Lord Tigra's actually good for. How sad. <laughs> you're pathetic. Listen. When you get back to Light Merits, the first thing you do is strengthen the Border Patrol. You really think the Lady would attack? Just as Ellen predicted, Lady Ludmila immediately began massing her army on the border of Light Merits. With this mobilization, Ellen found herself at a strategic disadvantage, sandwiched between the forces of Duke Tenardier and a fellow warman. Such was Tenardier's hope that the mere presence of Ludmila's army would hamstring Ellen's movements and thus keep her forces in check. Hmm. Unlike his dimwit son, Zion, Duke Felix Tenardier is a competent tactician. Are you going to fight Ludmila? I think that's exactly what she wants me to do. Interesting. On her own, Lady Ludmila has little to gain from waging war against another war maiden. But these moves allow her to strengthen the alliance between Tenardier and her principality of Olmutz. Tigra, you decide what's next. What, me? You can take the future into your own hands and strike against Ludmila, or send troops to Alsace and prepare a defense against Tenardier and Ganelon. I'm leaving it to you. Let's strike. I have to take an active role in this fight. As you say. But we need to make sure we protect Viscount Augur too, now that we're allies. And let's send an envoy to Ludmila first. Right. Unfortunately for Tigra, Ludmila promptly rejected the envoy he sent. The forces from Light Merits now advance, while the army from Olmutz braces itself for battle.
Scouts report Lady Eleonora is heading this way. Into defeat at my own hands. My lady, are you sure you want to battle the Wind Princess? An understanding between the House of Lori and the House of Tenardier has persisted for over 80 years. I will not let it fall apart on my watch. Like my lobby is here, I also carry an ancient pride. Eleonora does not. The Tatra Mountains stand to the east, overlooking the frozen Flotkin Plains. Here, amid the cold and falling snow, the first round of battle began between the two war maidens. <laughs> Battlefield momentum ebbed and flowed for hours, before day one ultimately ended in stalemate, and the two armies withdrew to lick their wounds. So, what do you think of Ludmila's men? It doesn't matter how hard you hit them, they get right back up. I agree. Mila has always been strong on defense. The best of all the War Maidens, which is doubly funny because she can be so damn aggressive in person. Thankfully, I don't recall seeing her fighting in the front lines all that much today. Well, I'd like to keep it that way. When all's said and done, she can't beat me in a pitched battle. In the morning, I'll stand at the head of our army, and then I will crush her myself. Lady Eleonora, what is your current record in one-on-one -on -one combat against the Lady from Olmutz? I'm up two to one. Yes, but I've heard Ludmila say she has the exact same record against you. How can that be? As near as I can tell, one of their duels was a draw. But ever since, both of them have claimed it as one of their wins against the other. You two just don't get along, do you? Olmutz and Light Merit's not getting along might as well be an ancient tradition. How do you mean? War maidens from the House of Lori. Like Mila's mother and grandmother, they're always hostile. Mother and grandmother? Are war maidens dynastic? Not quite. We're chosen. By a Dragon Gear weapon. Well, I'll give you the rest of the history lesson later. In the present, we've got a battle to win. It's like the Olmutz army was never even here. I believe they've withdrawn into the Tatra Mountains. She tricked us! Wait, you think this was a ploy? That Ludmila was planning this move from the beginning? She wasn't trying to destroy us during yesterday's battle. She was just feeling us out! High atop the Tatra Mountains is a citadel, with only one way in. Any attacking force will quickly find itself surrounded by well-entrenched defensive fortifications. Looks like she wants us to lay siege. The way's frozen over. She did it with her lobbyists to deny us a good position. It's more effective than any moat. I've heard my ancestors also had considerable difficulty with this place. Oh well, I won't let that stop me. The Light Merit's army surged forward to the Citadel, but the Olmud's forces gave no ground. Ellen's men had no choice but to fall back. Once more, the day ended in stalemate. How many times must I say this? It's a bad idea. The way this offensive is going, the battle will never end. And if her soldiers don't kill my men, the cold will. So I'll use Arifal's power to fly behind their camp and wipe out Ludmila's whole rotten army. Lord Tigra, please try to talk her out of this. Her plan's too reckless. Tigra, whose prisoner of war are you? I'm yours, my lady. That's exactly right, which means you should always trust my instincts, obey my orders, and pray for my safety in battle. You understand? Listen. I hold you in very high regard. I know I've asked you a lot by deciding to meet her in battle. My people are in your debt. So the last thing I'd want is for you to go on a suicide mission. Oh, really? That's right. Are you sure, Tigra? You really, truly care that much about me? Yes, I really do. I'm your favorite? What's that? What were you just thinking about? My homeland. <laughs> your heart really does belong to that little province, doesn't it? Well, that's okay. Because after all, both you and Alsace now belong to me. 
If you want to get technical. By the way, if you would have answered my question with the name of another woman, well, let's just say that Arifal here has been known to separate heads from their bodies. So mentioning Alsace was the best way to stay on my good side. Smart man. <sighs> so are you still going through with your plan? Give me a better one, and I'll follow it without complaint. I have an idea, but I'll need another favor. Three days in. Here you go. A bear skin? Hey, I heard a story once about a village where the men wore animal skins when they hunted. Just give it a try. It might even save your life. Hey, it's heavy. Hmm. Looks good. Huh? I didn't say anything. Huh. Are you sure he'll be okay wearing just that thing? Oh, I'll be fine. And I promise, I will find another path for us to that citadel. I still have water. But I need to find food. Take it that's your arrow? Lady, aren't you cold dressed like that? I'm well adapted to this climate. I think I'll be fine. You walked a long way to get to this spot, didn't you? How many paces away did you shoot this animal? There's no way you're that good of a shot. Don't lie to me, commoner. Sorry, sir. I guess I shouldn't have doubted that you're skilled with a bow. She can actually be quite nice. You can take that off now. We're inside where it's warm. As long as you're in my presence, the biting cold and snow shouldn't be a problem for you. According to the laws of my village, I'm not to remove this suit while I'm the hunt in the mountains. Well then, that's too bad. Tell me your name. It's Urs. Are you a war maiden, my lady? Yes, I am. And you don't seem that surprised by it either. Well, I don't mind. Thanks to your great skill with the bow and arrow, I'll look past your blunt manners. <sighs> I have an idea. You should come and serve in my court, Urs. Like I was getting at, a man with your talent is rare. You could make a good living. I came to the Tatra Mountains from a distant land. I won't turn my back on my home for any amount of riches. I see. That's too bad. Besides, aren't you worried I might be a spy? That's a weird thing for you to bring up now. You can relax. I believe a great bow hunter like yourself could make it this far. But a common soldier or spy doesn't have a chance. I know. Try it. It's good. <laughs> Glad you like it. Tea's the best, isn't it? Warms the body and the soul. She's smiling? I didn't know she was capable of that. What's the matter, Urs? Tell me. It's nothing. Now tell me, why is a war maiden out alone up here? Looking for fun. It sounds... Weird to say that out loud. If there's something you want to say, I'm a very good listener. Whatever you need to get off your chest. It's like the old fable about the frustrated man who yells into a tree hollow. You know, I never expected to meet a bear up here, and let alone one as nice as you. When I was chosen to be a war maiden, I thought I was ready to shoulder all of its responsibilities. But 
For the good of my country, that means being bound by old ties to people I hate. So in the name of tradition, I told myself I had to bury my true feelings. And I thought that I was right, but now I'm not so sure. Hmm. Goodbye and safe hunting, Urz! I won't forget you! And if you ever feel like visiting me, you're welcome any time at the palace in Olmutz! This isn't good. Once the sun goes down, I won't be able to follow our tracks anymore. I found it. The alternate route to the Citadel. Guard detail in the rear is light. If we can just get in there, even a hundred of us. This is more than I expected. Maybe she grew cautious after meeting a stranger in a bear suit. So what are we supposed to do, turn back? No. If we give up now, we're doing exactly what the enemy wants. We have to assume that while we're up here, Tenardier may be closing in on Alsace. I'm taking down this citadel tonight! to turn you into a pincushion! There's no other way in! Or have you forgotten that? It's no use. Now they know we're here. We have to keep trying. There's no time, not for you or for Alsace! Let me think. There has to be a move left. Think! Arifal! What? Please, Arifal, lend me your strength. I know that Ellen is the only master to whom you answer. There is no physical or spiritual connection between us. But since this works, lend me your strength. Two-timer. All right, here we go. The mighty citadel at the top of the Tatra Mountains has been breached. The next round and the battle between war maidens begins.